Geschlecht, du Sau und du Blader. Ma, 10%. Ring drop! Ring drop! Give me the ring! Boys, we got gloom fang. Look how tanky I am. Boom. Yeah, easy. And then people say I'm not tanky. I, I can show it again. Boom. I'm immune to damage, dude. The trinos are insane. Okay, boys. We arrived at the second floor. First time seeing the second boss, actually. The first one is, like, easy. After doing it a couple times, I guess. See yeah, how this one's gonna be. Raom and Usar. Oh wait, it's two? Wait, it's good! If there's two bosses, it's actually good, so the projectiles can chain off of it. Oh, it's... Shit. Okay, they're slow at least. But I'm lagging. You know, like my EK, projectiles chain off the bosses, so we always gonna have, like, big damage. Yeah, it's easy. Shit, what's this? Uh! Okay, this guy ain't choking. Wait, I killed one and the other one got full HP again. Torch. Good dodge, good dodge. Omega big bubble. Good dodge. Oh, nice! There you go, second boss down. Relic altar slots. Okay, what do we get? This. Uh, this. Or chaos. I don't fucking see shit! I'm dying! I'm not. Map clear. Easy. I'm, oh, oh! It's gonna be the undisputed best venture's gamble in the game. Nothing else. Boom! Yo, it's actually good! Oh, here he's coming. He's got. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. Might work. Might work. You fuck. Stop. Three life. No. Rare. God. Oh. Fuck, dude. What, what if I'm running out of portals? Two portals left, dude. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, the pop got destroyed. I was almost dead, dude. <laughs> oh no! I was almost done! Hey, but we did it deathless. Pretty good. Are you kidding me? Yo, what the fuck? No, now we're gonna do this stupid essence monster, right? Essence is bad, dude. Essence is bad, I swear, man. Nice. A divine orb number two. Wait, literally, it did? Just because I bought them now? They were like 30 chaos apiece, and now. This is like the problem if you have like a 1600 people watching and probably a thousand of those people are currently playing the build. So if people like, wait, hey, MBX buys a Grand Spectrum, just quartered in price. Yo, wait, but I, I don't need those jewels actually. Wait, uh, it's actually, no, I don't need those. I was just kidding, dude. Nah, man, I, I don't need those, man. I, I don't need those.
Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today update number uh, three in total, league day number two is done. We have some upgrades, we did some changes, sadly we're not the luckiest when it comes to like dropping cool fancy unique. So I mean it's day two, I still haven't found a mirror, I have not found a mage blood, I have not found a, a headhunter or anything else that is valuable. I'm actually still running a freaking five link, um, but we're pushing into the end of the league. Oh wait, that start. In the end of the league start, better said, because my league start um, is basically getting all your completions, 115, getting all your favorite map slots, as well as gathering all your four void stones. This is my league start. So the original plan was to finish this thing today, or at least get a gloom thing and then go finish this entire thing. Okay, that was the original plan. Um, I did get myself a gloom fang today, which is a pretty pretty good roll over here with a max roll on. The uh, projectors have chained gain uh, extra chaos damage basically with a 35 and then catalyst it up um, and get some cheap anointment with ash, frost and storm for the increased effect of non-damaging ailments and some extra ailment damage. And I paid three and a half divines for that. And other than that, um, fixing flask and stuff, I'm going to talk a bit, uh, a little bit about that in a bit. Blah, 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 blah. Holy shit. Um, and yeah, and when I was pushing, like, I was just going over my stash, I said, like, okay, boys, let's finish it, you know, T1, you know, when there's a white line on the, uh, on the border here, then you know, um, it is actually completed, right? Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4, Tier 5, every time, like, you just go one tier higher and just finish everything, and I got until, like, um, all the yellow tier maps all completed, I did a bunch of unique maps, um, and then I followed along with, um, pushing into high tier maps, but this is a bit tricky, I gotta say. Because in order to get the completion of the high tier map, you need to run them rare and corrupted. So every time you corrupt a rare map, uh, it can break, it can reroll, it can upgrade, it can like whatever, you know, but it can also like break the map. And the problem is, I just don't feel like spending chaos to buy maps for the completion. So I was pushing as many maps as I had on my stash and have found and did like the completion with the help of Kirak obviously. But even Kirak has a lot of items uh, for sale that I could actually get but I'm like 4 chaos for a map and this is like not even bad you know when it goes to like tier 14 tier 50 maps he sometimes charges 7 chaos. And if I buy it for 7 chaos, I identify it, I throw a Valorp and it, uh, it breaks, it has like early Reflect or some stuff or, um, you know, any mods that I just don't want to run, like 90% uh, chance to avoid elemental ailments or some shit, you know. Then I'm like, yo, I lost just 10 chaos just to try to get the completion going. And it is day 2, so I said like, you know what, I have time, you know, I'm not in a hurry, I'm not stressing myself, so what I did, I went back. I was going back. Um, and farming yellow and um, white and yellow maps. I did all my um, Atlas missions here. So you see zero zero on both yellow and uh, white here. Um, and then I went into uh, the temple. Then I did um, a lot of like delving, trying to get my soul fight up, you know. I did like all the content um, that I thought is going to be... Um, Good, basically, I dropped the Divine here and there, I upgrade my Flasks, because um, at some point I did already do, like, I think a tier 15 or tier 16 uh, Corrupted Rare, I think this was an 8 mod, and I barely did it with 6 portals, you know, you get randomly one-shotted, my, the Essence monster, you don't even, sh you shouldn't even click on them, because I have all the Essence uh, modifiers here on my, my stuff, right, sometimes they have, like, 7 Essences, and there is 2 Essence monsters, and they are, like, almost unkillable, right, it's like really, really brutal when it comes to those like high tier corrupted maps. And that's why I said like, you know what, I'm going to go a step back. going to continue farming the low tier maps, the mid tier maps, um, doing the leak mechanic that I also started to do. But I don't want to cover too much of the leak mechanic yet just because um, I'm not doing a lot of the leak mechanics. Um, but still like here is like uh, I'm on floor two, I think right now, or even uh, floor three. I'm not really sure about uh, that. I think it's floor three. Might be. I think it is. Um, so I'm slowly getting into the leak mechanic and finding out and figuring out how everything is working and that's why I don't want to um, like tell you guys yo you should do this and that and, and something like that if I'm not like a specialist in the leak mechanic. Once I figure out everything then I will most likely do a video about it but it's most likely going to be after the leak start series. Good. 
What did we upgrade? First thing, we got the uh, Gloomfang amulet. So this is was like the biggest uh, thing. So now for bosses, we lay down our brand, we get a Hydrosphere, we shoot our EKs, and then this will chain off to the boss and we get a lot of extra damage. If you're wondering, what is this like? Why is my uh, EK circular? This is because of the Helm Enchant, Ethereal Nice Fire, and the additional projectile. This is like quality of life is like nice if you do like Simulacrum, Delirium, Legion, stuff like that. You know, when you have, when you have, when you stand in the middle and just want to blast everything around you is not really needed at all, right? I just use it for quality of life, uh, and that's pretty much it. My endgame helm will most likely not going to have this enchant. But I had it, and that's why I also swapped to an uh, Anomalous uh, Ethereal Knives, because it has two additional projectiles. Just because I have the helm enchant, because I felt like, yo, if I want to attack this monster and I have too few projectiles, then my EKs are shooting, like, on the side, you know? So don't worry about that. Keep the original one with the projectile speed. It will be great and... Uh, easy to get basically right um uh, next thing i did is um i was getting all my gems to level 20 and zero and then you convert all of these okay so if you have a level 20 gem i just don't have any uh, any here yet but if you have a, um, a level 20 zero gem and then you vendor recipe it with a cheesy p then it's getting reset to level one with 20 percent quality and that's what i did with every single gem and now i already leveled them like uh, up to level 19 again in the start it's shitty T let me tell you guys if you reset all your gems you have zero damage so i went back to blood aqueducts then i started farming my white tier maps my yellow tier maps and now the gems have all quality 20 percent and i haven't really paid anything besides the gcps that i uh, found myself um, and now we're actually having like a lot of uh, more damage basically good another thing that i changed that in my opinion is like not a bad deal is and now listen carefully because i know a lot of people will get this wrong i have my i got myself now the physical damage converted to cold damage gloves i had them on my stash since day one i think and uh, my goal was to just farm this like eldritch currency and get the fire exposure on the implicit and i finally hit it after like probably 30 tries or something like that now i have fire exposure and this is like very very important because it's not only 11 percent fire exposure it's also five extra from our mastery that i have uh, somewhere here makes it 16 and then an additional 25 from our mastermind of discord and honestly i value this triple um exposure higher then actually having 100% conversion. So what I did is, since I'm having now 32 on the gloves, I use the cold mastery with a 40% uh, extra, so we are at 72%. And I'm going to write this down because you guys don't get um, confused by that. So I'm having at the moment 72% um, fist to cold. And since I don't want to deal any physical damage, so I can run fist reflect maps and stuff, I also took the physical of fire mastery. So I'm running both masteries, physical as cold, uh, fist to cold and fist to fire. So now we are having 40% uh, uh, fist to fire as well. So how does this work now since it's over 100%? Um, at the moment it's 112%, right? Um, but you cannot get higher than 100%. So it squishes those two values. And I'm not going to do the math, but I would just assume it's somewhere about 35, 65, for example, right? So based on the proportions of your uh, higher than 100, it's going to squish it down to 100 and then um, take the parts over here. So I, I would assume just that, that we have like a 65 to cold conversion, fist to cold, and then 35 fist to fire. So our cold damage is a little bit smaller in the portion, but we're going to get like, I don't know, like a 40 uh, fire exposure, lowering the enemy resistance. And this is, when you draw a line, still stronger than the Rimsorrow Gloves, but the Rimsorrow Gloves are like two chaos. This is going to be uh, a more expensive uh, way of doing. The next step would be the Watcher's Eye, but they're going for like seven, eight, nine divines. So this is like way out of reach. Um, but I'm still um, had a damage increase while doing so. And we got additional stats with some extra life and resistance. Um, so that's pretty fine. I don't worry about the critical strike chance for attacks. I just throw on anything I had. I think the um, the exposure is um, Eater of world, So we can take some Searing Exarch and maybe hit like some Fire Dot Multi maybe. Um, that would be nice. Or anything useful. Chance to unnerf. Unnerf was spell damage, right? Unnerf take spell damage. The problem is unnerf doesn't work for ignite. So if, if I leave this on now and people see, oh, he has unnerf on his gloves, then people are going to go unnerf. So don't do that. I'm just going to roll over. 
Uh, physical damage over time, fire damage to attacks, and mine throwing speed, sadly. And uh, nothing uh, that I got here. Doesn't really matter. The most important thing here is the fire exposure. Now we have this enabled. Now we don't need to use Wave of Conviction with any call to fire support to get shit going. And that's why I also remove the gem. So the next point would maybe be like, get my flammability in my Arcanist brand since there is no combustion anymore since my combustion is on my EK links, right? But as of right now, I'm still using this um, Curse on Hit Ring. So um, I'm still fine with just leaving this one open for now. Good. So we talked about the gem upgrades, the Gloomfang upgrade, the conversion with the gloves now, and I fixed my flask. So finally, no longer do I have this weird uh, whatever flask of Colossal Life Flask from level 30 that I never bothered to swap out. And that's also the reason why I decided to not take any more Life Flask, because... I don't think I need it too much. I'm having your Taste of Hate. This is probably one of the best flasks you can get on this build. Physical as extra cold and physical damage taking as cold damage, which makes um, us more resistant to these like bulky physical one shots. Then the Aetherius Promise, alley damage is extra chaos, physical damage is extra chaos. We benefit from both of those because we are using a physical damage um, spell as our base and we convert it and this physical is extra will still happen on both um, uh, on the physical part here, right? It's the same way as physical as extra cold works. And, and then I decided to do um, a silver flask, a granite flask, and a quicksilver flask. Um, I think I should still take a bleed immunity because I currently don't have any bleed immunity sources. I just took the corrupted blood immunity over here, but I did die like one or twice already from a normal bleeding coming from an auto attack. So I'm probably going to recraft uh, either of those um, and then just go with the flow, right? Um, Why well, I'm not using a Jade Flask, just because I'm not using um, Grace yet. So the Grace would be like, you know, Explody Bow with a, like a level 4 Enlightened support, um, with Mana Reservation Efficiency on your helmet, on your chest, or like, this is gonna be very, very endgame to squish in the um, Grace support, uh, like Grace, yeah, Grace Skill Gem. And I would do Mellow Balance before that, so I need even more Mana Reservation to get this one going. And this is not gonna happen anytime soon, and there is like no point. I have like how much evasion? Like uh, 1.4k, it's like literally nothing, right? But I do still have um, a 9,000 uh, 9, armor with the physical damage, taking as cold damage is another layer of defense, basically. Then my armor flask, um, cast speed, whatever. Um, another thing that I added here is I added three um, Grand Spectrum Jewels here with a 12% chance to avoid elemental ailments. And these ones stack and they are like additive to each other. What that means is if I put in one of those, um, then I have like 12 because this is what it says, right? If I add a second one, it's going to jump to 48 instead of 24. So why is that? Because it is 12 per Grand Spectrum. So if I have two of those in, it's 24 for this one and 24 of this one. It's a 48 in total. And if I get a third one, it's, it's 3 times 36 and not 3 times 12, okay? And those three jewels um, will make me element immune, which I value very, very high because um, you still die a lot from like ignites, from shocks, or you get like frozen by clicking chests and stuff like that. It is very annoying and I don't really have any good jewels. And it was like two skill points over here, two over here, and two over here. It's like six skill points for getting ailment immune. I would take this trade any day of the week until we get later on in the stages where we maybe get one of the new jewels and try to get ailment or 100% ailment avoidance or reduce duration basically uh, with something like anointed flesh cluster here or anything like that so we can save up those um, jewel slots to then opt in a large cluster jewels with a double medium jewel, for example, right? So, added Gloomfang, switched all the gems, got the conversion going on the gloves, running like a 65-35 ratio now on the physical to cold, the physical uh, converted to fire. We can fix our flasks and we got ailment immunity on top of that. I think overall I'm doing pretty, pretty fine. I still think that I did a good job today. Um, oh, and a big sale here. This is just a random ring that I found today on the floor with a double 40 res, 55 strength. I crafted some life on and boom, sold for 75 C. That's like a nice trade. Oh, we can talk about currency since you're wondering like, Wait a second, how did you make like, I probably made like five, six divines today. Um, I think one or two I did drop. Was it one or two? I'm not sure. I think it was two divines that I dropped. No, it was one. It was the second in total. Doesn't really matter. 
the, the trick here is, it's not about like, first of all, check your items. I do have some dumb taps over here from like the leak start. They're still over here. Like this was like leak start. That was day one. This is now day two. So I'm farming a lot. I'm grinding a lot. And sometimes you get like some random six links or maybe this belt here that I found today is like 90 um, chaos. So I'm going to probably put this to 85. So we get a quick sale on it because it's pretty low roll. Um, and by the way, if you're wondering why don't we not use this belt? Because I get like asked like, 100 times today on stream, why don't we use this belt? Because ignites you inflict with attacks deal damage faster, okay? With attacks. We're using a spell. Ethereal Knives is a spell, so this belt doesn't work. It's like something for uh, explosive error or something, right? Good. But converting your currency is a lot of currency, okay? I easily... Pro okay, I would say I made five divines just by converting currency, Okay. Means I traded my jewelers for chaos, my fusings, my chromas, my chisels, my uh, GCPs, my whatever you see over here, I just swapped into chaos. The same thing over here with like some eldritch currency. Um, I, I traded in my divination cards and got something of there. I um, I put up my um, breach stuff for sale, you know, not scarabs yet, but you get the idea. At some point, if I'm like, shit, dude, I need like, I need chaos, you know? Go over, check your currency tab, convert your stuff, you know, fragments, divination, essences, fossils, a blight, divination, uh, or at least a delirium. Sell your delirium maps if you don't want to run them, right? Um, you can even sell maps if you want to. I, for example, sell guardian maps at the moment um, because I think, like, I did do a normal a shaper guardian and the elder guardian, but they were both taking quite some time. But if the guardian map is, like, uh, 14 chaos and the fragment is, like, 16 chaos or so, you pre pretty much even net out from the guardian map to the fragment, but everything in the map is going to be profit. Pure profit, because if you buy Guardian Map for 15 chaos and you sell the Fragment for 15, you're still going to get everything in the map for free, basically, right? And it's a tier 60 map, so it's going to be better to get uh, higher map drops and so on. So if you're hurting for currency, boys, change your currency up, you know? I don't think you need, like, to have or to store a thousand jeweler orbs. This is also, like, uh, 30, 40 chaos, you know? Do you need your fusings? You're most likely going to um, buy the six link straight out of PoE trade, or if you want to... Fuse, that's up to you, but still, they're going for like a ratio of 10 chaos per 40 fusing. So maybe this is like, uh, I found pretty, uh, like a lot already. So um, I had like 200 fusings. That's also like 60, 70 chaos. And there you go. You By just converting jewelers, fusings, and chromatics, you make like one or two divines, you know? And then all of the other stuff. I mean, I would probably hold on to annulments and exalts because like, those seven chaos, I think they're gonna rise in price anytime uh, soon when people start to craft, you know, so, but Orpa One making, Regrets, they all sell like butter, you know, it's like super, super easy to convert your currency and get some quick currency and then fix your flasks, fix your gems, fix whatever you need to fix on your build uh, and then just be five head when you buy items, don't overpay for items like I do and you should be fine. Good. Tomorrow, next plan, as I said, I want to finish this entire thing. Hopefully, I'm most likely not going to do it just because it's going to get hard. It is rough, okay? Um, those tier 16 or tier uh, 15, if you're unlucky, rolling eight modifiers, maybe a bunch of like um, expensive, unique maps. I'm not sure about that. And uh, we still need to do like Conqueror is easy, but when it comes to like the end game bosses, you know, like even tiering X, like, I think the quest stuff is uh, quite easy, but we're still like here, tier 12 maps, tier 15, tier 30 maps, so while pushing for the Atlas completion, I'm also going to try to push out for the tiering X, the Eater of Worlds, and do my Maven stuff, and um, to get all these kind of things going, and then we're going to see how we're going to start um, doing our things. Uh, my Atlas passive tree, I linked you yesterday in the description below, I'm still going to link it today as well. I finished all my Strongbox notes, my um, Shrine notes, my Essence notes, um, my map sustain notes, and now I'm, I'm started to push into the delirium, and that would be the next couple points. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.